Is the internet computer decentralized? Today in this video, we're gonna be discussing this topic and the recent discussion that's happened within the ICP community regarding the decentralization or lack of decentralization of the internet computer. So let's hop straight into it. As you can see here, we are on Twitter and if you are part of the ICP community, you know exactly what I'm on right now. I'm on Justin Bonds' thread. Now I will say off the gate, I do understand Justin Bonds is an engagement farmer. And obviously when he puts out a thread like this, he gets a lot of clout on Twitter and then he gets people like me making videos about it. So, but at the end of the day, Dom did go ahead. Um, Dom went ahead and responded to this and it did, you know, cause a lot of commotion in the community as Justin probably wanted to happen. But at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be talking about it today. So it just is what it is. It's content. Anyways, let's get into it. So Justin Bonds, and before we get into this, let me just say this. Um, my personal opinion on decentralization is I believe it's a spectrum. I don't think anything is completely decentralized. And I think, you know, once again, things can be more decentralized or less decentralized. I don't think it's a yes or no type black and white type deal. And also a lot of the stuff being talked about in this, I don't completely understand. Okay. And I think anyone who's not, you know, super technical probably doesn't completely understand all this as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm basically just sharing you guys the news. And then at the end, I'm going to give you kind of my opinion of what I understand. Anyways, let's get into it. So Justin Bond starts out with this. Definity sacrifices decentralization for scalability. Despite their lofty and outlandish claims, ICP is highly centralized and insecure. You can attack and censor ICP subnets by only attacking a handful of known nodes in data centers. The problem lies with ICP's consensus algorithm. And by the way, in this video, it's going to be a lot of reading and shit because, man, it's Dom's response is absolutely insane. But anyways, take a look at this. ICP has an extremely modular design made up of independent subnets. However, unlike DOT and Atom, there is no option for shared security. That means each subnet is responsible for its own security. This inevitably results in very low validator counts endangering users. And here is the screenshot he shows from the internet computer dashboard showing the subnets. Um, third tweet of the thread is, as the security of using ICP is entirely dependent upon whatever subnet you are using, in practice, this translates into extremely low security guarantees. This applies to all of ICP's features, such as HTTPS outcalls, canisters, and BTC integration. ICP is not a direct proof of stake system and is even more delegated than decentralized DPoS, I think it means decentralized proof of stake because stake is not required for block production. Instead, stakeholders verify and vote on specific validators, publicly specific, specifying which data centers these nodes are hosted on the line for targeted attacks. An attacker would not would only have to take over slash regulate two thirds of a handful of known nodes in these data centers. This makes ICP even more vulnerable to attack compared to conventional proof of stake systems as it has in part effectively disconnected stake from the cost to attack. Now, a big reason this whole thing, you know, was made is the fact that ICPs, you know, he's talking about the subnets and everything, but also Definity's voting power is absolutely massive. As you can see on the internet computer dashboard, Definity and ICA voting power is currently at 20%, which is, you know, a lot. So that's also part of the reason he spun this up. Proof of stake generally uses crypto economic incentives to prevent attack, Literally putting billions of dollars at stake. In the case of ICP, there is nothing at stake. Ooh. Except for reputation. ICP, in other words, relies more on trust. Going against the very ethos, ethos of cryptocurrency. ICP also makes outlandish claims of infinite scalability. Its namesake. As you can see here, he's pointing to the website. ICP's subnet design absolutely does, does have a scaling limit unlike what icp claims as all subnets communicate directly with each, each other in dkg and computational expensive proving this to be a lie there is more native btc smart contracts only as secure as a subnet HTTPS outcall solves oracle problems works the same as web 2 apis misleading terminology canisters equals smart contracts replicas equals nodes service nervous system equals DAO. neurons equals state to icp and i will say when it comes to the uh some of the terminology, I do think that is, you know, kind of confusing for people when they first come into the ecosystem. I don't, I think a lot of us can agree with that in the ICP ecosystem that, you know, when people ask me what a canister is, I just say it's a supercharged smart contract. What's an SNS DAO? It's a DAO that's fully on chain. But once again, I do kind of agree with Justin here. I do think some of the terminology is kind of confu confusing. Like, you're, you know, you're talking about neurons, but you're really talking about staked ICP not what a neuron actually is. Um, so kind of interesting. 
Um, he makes a lot of, you know, interesting points in here. Once again, I think this is like the third time he's brought up the same thing and they've debated this like 20 times, but you know, it's back in the conversation again. Justin Bond's back. <laughs> he says the marketing is dishonest, whether intentional or not. People are being sold the moon as ICP claims to have solved all the blockchain's problems. Yet in reality, it is highly centralized and insecure. There are some good parts to ICP, but that does not redeem all that is bad. Now to this last thing, what he's saying here, um, I don't think the internet computer, I don't think any blockchain is perfect. I don't think anything in life is perfect. There's obviously going to be trade-offs with anything in life. Um, him talking about the marketing being dishonest. Here's the thing with marketing in general. Marketing is, what are you supposed, for something like infinite scalability or um, something else or whatever, whatever. When it comes to marketing in general, you always kind of have to, you know, amplify things and make things seem a little cooler than they really are. I mean... You know, you got to say like super fast, blazingly fast instead of, you know, saying, and it is kind of a little, you know, marketing sometimes can be a little dis disingenuous, but that's kind of how the world of marketing actually works. You know, it's kind of like clickbait in general. Um, I'm not saying this is, you know, this marketing is dishonest, but I'm just talking about marketing in general. I think every single foundation in crypto has some interesting marketing, um, I don't think it's just an ICP specific thing. And I don't think the Definity Foundation is doing anything wrong. I'm just saying, if Justin is looking at all these other chains, I'm sure all of these chains are, you know, doing some interesting marketing when it comes to the way they're selling their stuff, whether it's saying it's super decentralized or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, we all know the decentralized buzzword. Um, but yeah, now let's talk about, and of course people are arguing about it in the comment section, and yeah, so it's, it's pretty insane. And to Dan McCoy saying, please stop using ICP's projected success as engagement farming. I'm sorry, Dan, that I'm making this video, but you know, it is what it is. And I completely agree. This should probably be the last time we give this dude attention, but I highly, highly doubt that it's going to be the last. I think he's going to come back and it's going to you know, cause a stir again. But let's see what Dom has to say. ICP security involves different thinking versus proof of stake networks, so direct comparisons are hard. Differences include deterministic decentralization versus simple Nakamoto coefficients, gamers of life versus small game fallacies, hardware versus liquid stake. And he says, big thanks to Justin Bonds for his willingness to debate the ICP community on the subject. So then he goes and he writes this whole paragraph, which um, should we read this right now? I think we're going to read it because if you made it this far, then you're probably an ICP nerd. And yeah, so decentralization, generally speaking, is a nebulous term that is difficult to measure. I agree with Dom. Should we measure the decentralization of the Bitcoin network by the rather small number of mining pools that might double spending by colluding or by the much larger minimum number of individual miners that would need to collude? Upon the assumption that miners would leave any pool involved in any attack, or should we measure the decentralization of Ethereum using the number of individual virtual validators nodes running in the cloud, or by the number of big tech clouds that control them? These are tough questions. The internet computer uses a decentralization framework, which underpins the security of its protocol known as deterministic decentralization. This aims to calculate and create decentralization, both with more certainty and also with less replica replication more efficiently and is more nuanced and basic Nakamoto coefficient thinking. And that's the thing. All these conversations are super nuanced. Um, the system is made possible because the network runs under the direct and exclusive control of an advanced permissionless DAO that is integrated into its protocols called the NNS, which currently has more than $3 billion of ICP staked and huge numbers of participants. The NNS adopts us rejects proposals that do many things, two of which are particularly relevant to decentralization. It hands out node provider profiles to those who ask for them. And two scales the network by forming, configuring subnet blockchains by adding and removing node machine hardware operated by different node providers. We're going to keep going. Node providers all obtain profiles by submitting proposals that specify the data centers. They will be installing node machines within, which information that then gets associated with their profiles. Another type of proposal which anyone can submit forms new subnets from existing nodes or just adjust nodes by adding slash removing nodes with the requirement that deterministic decentralization is observed. This involves combining node machines from one, different node providers, two, installed in different data centers, which are three in different geographics and four different jurisdictions. The purpose is to create subnets which would require a higher degree of node provider collusion to break, and which are also resilient to 
A nuclear bomb hitting data centers in a geography or a government such regulatory area attack executed within a jurisdiction such as the EU. Some subnets have special purposes, such as those hosting Bitcoin, and have higher replication factors need securities on cost-benefit curve and tailored precisely to need. It is important to compare this traditional proof-of-stake practice where validators are anonymous and mostly run on big tech's cloud services. For example, the Hetzner cloud suddenly shut down 40% of the Solana network, more than 1,000 per thousand of its validators after deciding it didn't want them. By implication, it could have also taken full control of the network. Further consider the vast numbers of cloud operators on Ethereum are in practice, sometimes created by one operator behind the scenes. Arguably, the cloud providers of the nodes, not the validators the host. Good point. Deterministic decentralization does not depend on having a huge number of anonymous validators running in the cloud, and I would argue provides more dependable decentralization that is also certainly more efficient. If required, the internet computer network Protocols allow for very large numbers of nodes to be combined into subnets. Where they are not, it is because analysis performed deterministic decentralization indicates that would be unnecessarily wasteful. And then he says, games of life. I don't always agree with Nick Sabo's thinking, but one of the pieces that I think is incredibly insightful and generally important for the crypto industry and often overlooked is this small game fallacies. And then he keeps going. He talks about Nick Sabo. So we're going to go past that. The internet computer runs on sovereign hardware called node machines, which are built slash purchased by independent node providers who install slash run them from independent data centers around the world and proof of work to proof of useful work. The hardware based approach is diametrically opposed to proof of stake, which typically sees validators running on big text cloud run by anonymous operators who have joined them to the network staking the same amount of crypto, uh, cryptocurrency. As per the preceding action, the thousands of validators running on the Amazon Web Services should really be seen as one node for reasons highlighted by the hit incident. So basically what Dom's trying to say is if Amazon Web Servers came along and said, hey, AVAX, or hey, Solana, you're done, or Ethereum, you know, it could cut out all of them at once. That's what he's pretty much trying to say. But besides that one point, what we need to compare is the types of stake involved in proof of stake versus internet computer nodes. All right, we're almost done. An ICP node is just... <laughs> Not joined to the network by staking ICP tokens, but rather by merit of being standardized hardware. And I will say, I do know a guy who's an actual node provider for the internet computer. <clears throat> and it is like a big hardware thing. I've seen pictures of the nodes. Um, it's like big fucking machines. So that can keep up with the nodes, blah, blah, blah. This standardized hardware is expensive. It costs 20K per month. Yeah, he was telling me it's uh, very expensive. And these wishing to support optimized AS smart contracts will likely find the specs of those nodes will probably exceed 100K. This hardware is, of course, a form of stake that the node providers put at risk and is not one that is not liquid. The cost fully includes both the cost of acquiring and installing the hardware and the hosting contracts with data centers. If a node provider is kicked off the network for cheating or running some standard hardware that can't keep up with the block rate, in practice, they will have problems reselling their accumulated hardware will be unable to recoup setup costs and will often be struck with contracts for co-location and bandwidth. By contrast, a proof of stake validator node on Amazon can be spun up down on a button of click. Nothing is staked apart from the cryptocurrency. However, there can be a hypothetical using liquid staking. In short, what is actually staked is much more woolly subject. While it's explained in the previous section, we believe that the larger games of life trump the smaller game fallacies of narrowly defined proof of stake cryptocurrency economic systems, not just in theory, but technical practice. We also believe that it's often hard to determine what is actually staked when the stake is cryptocurrency. We would argue, as with many things in crypto theory, that the truth is far more nuanced than the big brassy theory boilerplate justifying the design of major proof of stake networks would suggest. In summary, the stability of hardware stake and the forces created by the larger games of life unleashed the uh, intelligent decentralized governance that carefully combines hardware opera operated by identified node powers in a scheme of de determined decentralization allows decentralized to be measured and tuned by, uh, more accurately with far greater predictability and therefore safety. Holy shit. That was an absolute masterclass by Dom. And yeah, um, I've done a lot of reading in this video and what I'm going to say is once again, my overall opinion is, you know, we can argue about decentralization, this or that, but at the end of the day, it's a spectrum. And I do think the internet computer is, of course, when it started out, it was very centralized, but it's becoming more and more centralized. And I think that's kind of the route, you know, I've seen this with Definity and even through kind of their marketing that they are continuing to go down more of a more decentralized approach to the internet computer. But here's the thing, as the internet computer is in its infancy right now, 
it's not necessarily a bad thing that Definity does still control a lot of the power because the Definity Foundation does care and they do want to make this thing as good as possible. So it's kind of a good thing. There's some trade-offs, but it's kind of like taking care of a baby. You know, the internet computer is like a little baby or like a toddler. So you got to like raise it up and then eventually it can run free in the wild once it's old enough. I think that's kind of the approach that Finney's been taking. Now we're going to be talking about um, what accumulating ICP had to say. Accumulator said, I know we don't like to hear it, but ICP is centralized. 100% of VP was self-assigned to and by Definity upon Genesis, with 99% being retained under a set and forget model. Rather than shutting out critics, utilize your own critical thinking skills to improve upon their concerns. And if you take a look at this, um, back in May of 2023, Accumulator had put out this massive post on the ICP forum talking about this centralization problem, all this, and we're not going to go through all this. But overall, my opinion is this, okay? At the end of the day, you know, somebody has to have control of the network and it just happens to be Definity. Now, the advantages of Definity having control of the network is the fact that they legitimately have good intentions with it. It's like their full job to care about the network. You know, the Definity Foundation is there to grow the internet computer. So the people working who have the power at least have good intentions with the network to try and make it as good and as big as possible. Now, a lot of people have said a lot of FUD and BS about the Definity Foundation regarding the price and the chart. Now, I do think there were mistakes were made when it comes to some of these VCs, but at the end of the day, we can't go back in time and fix those mistakes and we can only move forward with time. So I think, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing that Definity has most of the power right now. Now, I do think eventually, at some point, I don't know when it's going to be, but eventually the internet computer should become more decentralized. I think that's, you know, if we're really following through with the whole crypto thesis of decentralization and all this, the internet computer should eventually become more decentralized. But once again, I kind of talked about this before just a couple minutes ago. The internet computer is basically a baby. Definity is like the parent and we're, it's just trying to grow up the kid. You know, instead of just handing the kid off as a toddler and having it fucking run off in the wild, not know what's going on, Definity's kind of like taking care of the kid, nurturing it, and then eventually once it's old enough and it knows enough, then it can walk off and do its own. That's kind of, I think, you know what, Definity's kind of thinking about this whole thing. And here's my overall opinion. From Yee GZ, decentralization is a meme. Do I want corporal investors controlling a majority of the voting power in the NNS or would it be preferable that dad Dom have the most say? I will always choose the latter. In my opinion, crying loudest, people crying loudest by centralization only want the power for themselves. And that's what I'm trying to say. Somebody's going to have the power eventually. And the reality is, is that it just happens to be definitive right now. In my personal opinion, how much do I actually care about this? If I'm being completely honest, not much. I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I do obviously care about the internet computer and, you know, but like, I don't, I, I'm not a big, huge decentralization guy. I've kind of went through that whole phase where I initially got into crypto and I'm huge on decentralization. And then I kind of realized things aren't actually decentralized and it's more of a spectrum. My personal goal is to make money off the tokens. That is the whole point of my channel pretty much right now as it stands we are here to make money off the tokens and to my you know i don't think the token price in the market's going to give a shit right now if icp is decentralized or not now and once again should it become decentralized in the future i'm not re even really sure myself i i don't even have that big of an opinion myself on it like once again i'm here to make money off the tokens and i do think you know there's, there's, it's very hard to like figure out which, you know, should Definity have a lot of the power? Should Definity give it up, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, someone's going to have the power. Whether, you know, there's no scenario where there's not somebody who has the most power. It just happens to be Definity right now. And, you know, I think they've done, you know, I think they're trying hard and I think they're doing their best with the power. And of course it's going down, which is, could be seen as a good or a bad thing. But once again, I just think it's a meme. You know, and at the end of the day, we're here to make money off the tokens. And I kind of just made this video basically for you guys and to give you guys your own opinion. Because once again, I think this is extremely nuanced and take this information, digest it, go over Dom's Twitter thread again, 
Um, go over Justin Bonds. Take a look at what accumulating has to say, and then you can make your own opinion yourself. But at the end of the day, it's like, brother, you know, I'm here to make money off the tokens, and this is a little bit, you know, just kind of out of my scope, you could say. Um, of course, it's going to be interesting to see how the internet computer grows after in this next decade. But once again, this isn't going to affect the price of anything over the past next two years. So, yeah, that's all I got for today's video. Today was more of a reading video and more of a just hanging out with me while I read stuff and I try to understand things. So, yeah, if you just enjoyed this video, you made it this far, you should be subscribed. I mean, if you just listen to me talk for 20 minutes, you should be subscribed. Leave a like, leave a comment. Go follow me on X. Link in the description. Go follow me on X. And, yeah, thank you for watching.